Thank you, Pastor Lai. Thank you so much for this Lord, opportunity. The Lord bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Program Director. That was very awesome. May the Lord continue to increase you on every side. People of God, you're welcome once again. This is the very last meeting of this divine invitation. This divine invitation is an upper room invitation. Is a is a is a is a you know courtroom invitation. God brought us into the courtroom these five days. Incidentally, like God's servant was saying, today is day number seven of the seventh month of the year. What a divine arrangement. The Bible said this, God sanctified the seventh day and made it holy. So this is a holy day is a sacred day. And we have seen in the different scriptures we have read in the course of this month that God executed judgment over an evil agent who was masquerading himself in the name of a prophet, bewitching people. God executed judgment over his head on the seventh month and killed him. Any force of wickedness, any agent that is masquerading himself or herself as a friend or, you know, somebody that is pretending, living in pretense around you, but is a devourer of your destiny. This month of July, Jehovah himself will execute judgment on the head of every robber of your destiny, every robber, every oppressor, every hindrance to your destiny. Be it altars, be it man, be it woman, God of heaven, the God of judgment, the God of judgment, who has shown me his burden, his passion towards people he's bringing here tonight. That same God will execute a violent judgment on the head of everyone that say you will not be who God has destined you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Even this evening, God himself is out to fight. God is himself is out to rescue me, to rescue you, to rescue every family, every business, every ministry that has been under satanic lock, under satanic lock. So I want to Thank God for this meeting. And since morning, I've been hearing unlocking the scroll of my life mission, unlocking the scroll of my life mission. You know, I have said again and again, I'm sorry for that. I've been saying here, that every one of us was born with a scroll in our hands. The scroll contains our mission, our assignment, our mandate. Jesus said, it is in the volume, it is written concerning me. But I have come to do that which is written concerning me. Something is written concerning each one of us. And as you are born, though people don't see you holding a scroll, but in the spirit, you came into this life with a scroll. And that scroll contains your mandate, your glory, your assignment, your mission, your mandate, and, your, and all that God has destined you to make happen for him before you return back to him. Now, this meeting is very, very special from what God showed me. In the course of praying for this meeting in the earlier hours of today, the Lord opened my eyes to see a scroll that was wrapped, you know, a scroll that, you know, when you, during graduation, you see when they give out the, 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 the certificate or whatever, they put it in a kind of scroll and they put it in there, that container kind of stuff. I saw a scroll that I understood contains people's destiny, people's life mission, people's life assignment, people's 
assignment and what God has commissioned each man, each woman, families to accomplish for him. But this scroll was locked. It was, it was, it was put inside a kind of, into a kind of seal and a metallic seal, an iron seal that look rough, that look ancient. And this troubled me. I've been seeking the Lord, what is this? And he said to me, in this meeting tonight, he is going to break seals, break locks, break yokes that have been placed over people's destiny, over people's mission, over people's mandate, over people's breakthrough that comes across the health, the prosperity, the mission, the mandate, and everything God sent you into this life for, which the enemy have put under a lock. The enemy have put it under a lock, under a seal. And that took me to the book of Revelation chapter 5, and I've been reflecting on that long portion, and please permit me, I'm going to read that whole story so that you will capture the picture very well. I'm reading from the book of Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1, and the, I saw in the, in, the, in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. A scroll written inside and at the back, all right? Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seal. This scroll is so locked with not just one seal, seven seals, seven locks, seven bondages, seven blockages that have covered this scroll. And when he saw it, he cried out, then an angel said, an angel proclaimed with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose the seal? To open the scroll and to lose the seal. And no one in heaven or in the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to, or to, to look at it. Nobody could look into it because it is sealed. Why is it sealed? Because it is locked. It is locked with seven locks. Yes, verse number four. He said, so I wept much. I wept much. I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the seal, to, or, 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 to, open, the, 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 to open and to read the scroll or to look at it. He wept because nobody was worthy. Nobody was anointed enough. Nobody was righteous enough. Nobody was enlightened, educated, or wise enough to know what to do to break the seal and to get into the scroll. Then he said, but one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Hallelujah. This is my excitement. Do not weep because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. Oh, glory to God. Jesus has prevailed for me. Jesus has prevailed for you, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose the seven seals. That scroll, the enemy has locked from ancient times, from, from primordial times, from uh, the ancient time, it was Lord. I saw a metallic iron seal that looked rough and old. It tells me this is an ancient lock. Some people are going with a very slow speed because of locks that have been placed over their mission, over their destiny, over the work of their hand, over their business, over their marriage, over their health. The progress is so slow because there is a lock. There is a lock over that scroll, over that mandate. And thanks be to God who is compassionate, who is compassionate. He has seen my state. He has seen your state. He has seen your situation. And he's risen with compassion to prevail over the forces that, that are determined to prevail over you. Look at what he says here. The, the root of David has what has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose the seven seals. 
Verse 6 says, and I looked and behold in the midst of the, of the throne of the, of, of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into, the, into all the earth. I saw something there. I don't know if I've ever thought about that before. He said that this beast, or rather, yes, this, this, uh, this lamb, that represents my savior. It represents your savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says he, he, he has seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God that have been released into all the world. So these spirits are horns. These spirits are eyes. All right, we shall look at it towards the end. The seven of them, they are the horns of God, the, the horns of Christ, with which he made war to conquer. They are the eyes of Christ, with which he searched through the whole universe and fixed what has gone wrong. I pray that today you will receive these seven horns, you will receive these seven eyes, you will receive these seven horns, these seven eyes, these seven spirits will come upon you and settle with you. The next verse, he says, then he came and took the scroll out of the, the out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and gold ball full of incense, which are the prayer of the saints that are rising out of this meeting, rising out of this meeting since we began. Look at what he says here in verse number nine. And he and they sang a song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you we are slain, you we are slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, your blood, your spotless blood out of every tribe, out of every tongue and the people and nation. He has redeemed us out of every tribe and the tribal curses, out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, and all the negative things that go with them, he redeemed us from them. He had redeemed me. Every negative thing that go with black people, he redeemed you out of it. That go with white people, he redeemed you out of it. Your tribal people, he redeemed you out of ancestral curses and covenants. He redeemed you through the token of his blood. The next. It says, and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four elders, a living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This, the, the computer took me back. Verse 10, and made us, he, come on, what's going on here? Okay, verse number 10. Sorry for that, that was a mistake. Verse 10, he said, and made, and made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Now he redeemed us that we might reign. Something is about to come upon you in this meeting. And the essence is that you, having been redeemed, having been freed, having been liberated from the shackles that were placed over the scroll of your destiny, over the glory of your destiny, over your star, having broken those yoke, you being redeemed out of the bloodline limitations, out of the tribal limitation, he lifted you and elevated you and got you seated in heavenly places above principalities and powers that you might reign, reign on the earth that you might reign with him on the earth. Verse 11, then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, the angels we are shouting with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Servant of God, this is not my focus this morning, this evening, but I want you to understand this. The seven horns, 
the seven horns, the seven eyes with which Jesus Christ want me and you to possess. He wants us to possess it in order to reign on earth, in order to rule on earth, which we are the things the evil one made sure is not unveiled is not released, is not unleashed. You don't get access to it. It was sealed with seven seals. Each one had the seal on itself. The seven of them, each one was sealed. These are the horns God is giving to you and me. These are the eyes God is giving to you and I. So that with it, we shall rule, we shall conquer, we shall prevail over the, help, the forces of this world. It's called power. It's called power, which means power is a horn. Power is an, is, 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 is an eye with which you see and see and break through. He said the horn, another horn is riches. So wealth is, is a horn. Wealth, riches is a horn. Wisdom is a horn. Strength is a horn. Honor is a horn. Glory is a horn. Blessing is a horn. These are horns of God. These are spirits of God. These are eyes of God with which we rule, we rule, we reign, we trade upon satanic forces and powers, and we conquer and we have dominion. So I saw a scroll, somebody's destiny, somebody's glory, wealth, riches, honor, power, wisdom. We are content in status quo, but somehow I was sealed with strong seal, with strong metallic ionic steel. But thank God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one that went on the cross and shed his blood, that by the ministry of his blood, he will redeem you, he will redeem your family, redeem your business, redeem your ministry, redeem your children, redeem the entire work of your hands from every seal, from every limitation, so that you can stand, not because of your intelligence, no, not because of your education, not because of your lineage, not because of where you live, no, not because of how strong you look, bah, 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 no, but because of the price that was paid over your head to break the seal, to break the blockages, to break the yoke, to break the limitations. To God be all the glory. I've been hearing, Lord, unlock every seal placed over my life. Every seal placed over my career, every seal placed over my business, over my ministry, every seal placed over my marriage, over my family, over my children, over my mission, a mandate. Oh God, arise and let every seal be broken. Let every seal be broken. Let the victory Jesus wrought for me on the cross, let it be enforced. Let it be implemented. Let it be executed. Let it be appropriated over every segment of my life that is under lock. Shall we begin to pray? Please, unmute yourself and Let's begin to pray. Cry out unto the Lord, and God will arise. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is that night something must break in the spirit something must burst out in the spirit there's going to be a resurrection i now remember why god showed me people that were mounting up they were suddenly mounting up with wings suddenly mounting up with wings like aircraft float flying into the realms of glory into realms of wealth into realms of honor into realms of wisdom realms of power realms of 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 everything that is good for which god sent you he says in the book of Psalm 56, verse 9, he said, when I cry unto you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. This I know because God is for me. It's a day to cry out, not a day to complain. He said, when I cry to you, when I cry to you, then my enemies will turn back. My goodness said, when I cry, can you give it to me in a different translation? Now, I want you to understand here, people of God. Today, I want you to remember, remember, every time God is doing a mega thing, a major, mega thing, mega, major thing, or mega, major, major, mega, he's not doing it just because of you alone. He's doing it because of what he wants to do with you. Beginning from your family, that is why you, 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 this prayer, we're not praying it just for ourselves, pray it with the consciousness of your family, with the consciousness of the families, families of the earth, families of the earth. When God visited Abraham, it wasn't just for Abraham, it was for Abraham and for me. God saw me in Abraham, he saw you in Abraham. There are people you are going to touch by virtue of what God is doing in your life this season there are people you will touch you will touch. you don't know them as i'm speaking some of them you know yes there are businesses that are struggling god will set them free because of you there are ministries that are struggling god will release them because of you there are family members that are bound their marriages are about to crash their health is in trouble but because of what God is investing in you, you are becoming a deliverer, a liberator, a transformer of life and communities. And that is why we're here. I want you to cry out to God, Lord, every enemy that have locked my destiny, that have locked my future, that have locked my inheritance, that have locked my glory, my honor, my blessing, my riches, my greatness. Oh God, arise and let your fire, let your judgmental arrow, judgmental arrow strike every one of them. Be the altar or humans that lock 
this destiny with strong Hashem seal. Oh God, arise and let them be. Let them experience your judgment. Let them experience your judgment. I release my destiny. I release my heritage. Shall we begin to pray somebody? In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I call upon you here again. in Jesus now listen people of God we won't have all the time to pray these matters but I am decreeing it because I'm taking time since morning to be praying for this meeting I'm praying for you now look at this I want you to get angry in your spirit this night. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse number seven, I see something here. I want to, Mama, you put it for me in the New Living Translation. I want to read it from the Good News, King James. He said, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Now, the Lord made me to know, because of the resistance you have suffered, because of the limitation and the blockage and restraint you suffered, by the interruption of the forces of darkness from ancestral foundations and times of past, from the things of the past that have held your glory, your blessing, your honor, your marriage, your wealth, your ministry, your business, you are calling. Because of it, you have been in shame. You have suffered shame and rejection and humiliation and mockery. He says, instead of the mockery and shame you've suffered, you shall have double honor. You shall have double honor. Wherever you seem to have suffered much in that area, you have more glory, more honor. That's what the Lord is saying here. He said, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. That is a portion of inheritance that is written over you, meant for you. Christ paid for it. That is an inheritance Christ paid for with his life for you. He says, and instead of confusion, you shall rejoice in your portion of that inheritance. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. The new living says, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy double share of honor. Double share of honor. You will, you will possess a double, a double portion of of, of what? Of prosperity in your land, in your land. And ev everlasting joy will be yours. Can I give you a secret? Take note of this. The Lord said to me a while ago that, you remember I told us that as if you belong to this network, you, you, you belong to every land is yours. I belong to Africa, I belong to Asia, to Europe, to the United Kingdom. I belong to North, South, and Central America, to Australia and Oceania. When we are making this prayer, don't make light of it. It's not a burden, it's a privilege. And one day, it never occurred to me, the Lord said, as you are traveling over these nations, these nations have become your nations. 
The lands have become your lands. Therefore, you shall have a portion in all of these lands you are praying for. Something is about to happen in your life which people have never thought possible. People have never seen it. People have never heard of it. It is happening to you because of the call of God upon your life and for the privilege that's given to you to be laboring over the nations. He that tilleth upon over the land, that tilleth over the land, that tilleth the land rather, shall reap, shall eat, shall harvest from that land you are tilling. God is not ungrateful. He is not unfair. He will reward the fruit of your level. He will grant you the fruit of your level. What is our point here? He says, Lord, let there be multidimensional harvest coming to me. Because the enemy has resisted me, there shall be double blessing. Where enemy has resisted me, I am demanding double honor, double honor for stealing my documents, for stealing my, the, the mantle, the mandate, for stealing it, hiding it, locking it. I am demanding double glory. Whatever be your glory today, whatever you should have become, had it been your document of destiny was not blocked, whatever you should have become, whatever you could have become, double of it, Place the demand on the heaven. He said to me this afternoon, open wide your mouth and I will feel it. If I tell you what I asked for, you, you will fall out of your seat. You will fall out of your seat. Open wide your mouth and I will feel it. So servant of God, please begin to pray. Begin to pray. Unmute yourself and begin to pray. What are we praying for? Wherever you've suffered shame and rejection and dishonor, double honor, double glory, double portion, double reward in that land and all the lands of the nation. In the name of Jesus, Father. <laughs> Servant of God, I am with you in Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel chapter 2, verse 25, it says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the, swam, the, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army, that sent among you. God restore unto me years that have been wasted. Wasted years. Wasted years. Years have gone. Somebody has been at a spot. In fact, not even at a spot, going backwards, going backwards, but spiritually, financially, maritally, health-wise, in every area, going backwards. That backward movement is over. That backward movement is over. That backward movement is over. That force, that pull, that dragging you back, that 
force is hereby broken and a new force is on you to pull you forward, to pull you forward. It's called the force of mercy, the force of grace, the force of favor is on you, pulling you forward and not just forward on the ground, but pulling you upwards, breaking the force of, of, of a friction that led to this discussion. God said, I want to accelerate you to a point that just like an aircraft, when an aircraft is about to take off, it will increase, it will start slowly, 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 then it will pick up, and then the acceleration goes on, the force goes on, it begins to accelerate, the momentum begins to increase, the momentum grows as this velocity is growing, all of a sudden, the force will conquer the force of friction, it can hold the tires again, it will mount up into the sky and it will go on and go on, on and on until it will even break through the gravitational forces and goes into a space, goes into a realm where there's no more limitation, no more hindrance. And that's why you hear the, 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 the crew will announce, ladies and gentlemen, you can remove your, your seatbelt and relax. You cannot eat. You cannot move around. We are broken free from the zone of resistance and, you know, and, uh, and, and, and obstructions and obstacles. We are free from that area. We have entered into a place of rest, into a place of rest. Servant of God, that's where we're get, getting to. Accelerating to the place of rest. Accelerating to the place of rest. Little wonder today is the seventh day of the seventh month. God is giving you double freedom, double rest, double settlement, double settlement. He says, the God of all grace, who has called you unto his eternal glory, after you've suffered for a while, he will do what he will perfect you he will he will perfect you he will he will he will establish you he will strengthen you and he will settle you this is the big the new dimension of perfection a new dimension of settling and strengthening and, and, and establishment by the force of this grace of God that is breaking everything that has been resisting you. What is our prayer? I want you to pray, Lord, everything, everything that have been uh, opportunities have wasted, years have wasted. Chances that slipped off my hand. Lord, I am recovering them all. I am recovering them all with a speed that is unbelievable, with a velocity, with a momentum that cannot be attributed to my abilities. Shall we begin to praise somebody in that name that is above on them? Lord, we call upon you. The Hallelujah. Blessed be God. I want you to pray. Oh Lord Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Isaiah chapter 58, verse number six. Isaiah 58, verse number six. He said, this is, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. We've been on fast. Thank God for the inspiration to embark on this fast. 
Thank God for it. We are going to pray. I don't know the family you came from. I don't know how things have been in that family. Can you be a little bit compassionate about your family? Can you, can you see like in the priestly day, in the days of the priest, when they want to enter into the Holy of Holies, they wear a, a garment and on that garment, they wear certain, you know, um, ceremonial garments that bear the names of all the tribe of Israel. I want you to wear your family members. Wear them upon your heart right now. We are carrying them to the courtroom, to the courtroom, to negotiate, to battle, to free them, to recover them, to redeem them, to reconcile them with destiny, to reconcile them with destiny. And this prayer, I want us to, in this period of fasting, it says, it's a time to do what? To lose the bond of wickedness. Every wickedness, every bond of wickedness, chain of wickedness placed over the destiny, your destiny, the destiny of your mother, your father, your, your, your husband, your wife, your children, your siblings, whatever yoke of death, yoke of death, of sickness, of shame, of failure, of not amounting to anything, Laboring and having nothing to show, let that yoke be broken. The yoke of wickedness, bewitchment, sorcery, satanic robbery. Some people, their destiny have been robbed. Robbed. I hear the Lord say to me a while ago. He says some people's destiny have been have been hacked into. The devil has hacked into people's destiny, hacked into people's destiny, and using their gifting to destroy them and to do all manner of things and tell lies against their life. Some of the things our family people are doing is not what they are meant to do. The devil hacked into their life, using them to tell lies about themselves. I want us to pray, Lord, every bond of wickedness over my life and my family must be broken. Every heavy burden, every heavy burden and oppression must be lifted today. Shall we begin to pray? In the name of Jesus, please unmute, unmute and pray. My God, Lena Doseta, Legada, 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 Legada. Thank you. 
over health here over the health of people i want us to pray particularly over health now now he says in jeremiah chapter 13 verse 17 i will restore health unto you i will restore health unto you i will heal thee of thy wounds i will heal thee of thy wounds i want us to pray is anyone sick in this place he said i will give you back your health i will give you back your health take it take your health take your health that's the health you used to have can i say something here there is nobody here or no person whose relation is as sick as job was nobody not even up to one percent not up to one percent of the sickness of job but did job recover you know the story better sir you know it better man he said i will give you back your health and heal your wound heal your wound says the lord for you are called an outcast jerusalem for whom no one cares you have been reproached and mocked, but God says he will give you back your health. Please, if you are sick, I want to, wherever that sickness is, place hand there and cry unto God, God, give me back my health. I receive back my health. Of course, you know, Jesus has already paid the price and has given us the Bible said, by whose stripes we are healed. By whose stripes we are healed. Not we shall be healed, we have been healed. Lord, I receive my health. I receive my health. I receive back my health. I receive the healing of any wound of any form inside or outside, be it in the kidney, in the liver, in the, in the, in the pancreas, be it in the skeletal system, be it in the prostate system, any part of the body that is diseased, receive your healing now. You know anybody that is afflicted by disease or sickness, cry unto God now, Lord, we receive back the health of this brother and this sister. Please begin to pray somebody. Stretch out your hands and receive it. He said, I will give you back your health. I will give you back your health. Father, I receive health. I receive health. Total health. Total health. Total health. Total health. Total health. Total health. I receive the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it's upon my body. Total health. 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 Total much <laughs> Of the Lord Jesus, Father, we give thanks to you. Healing is the bread of children. It is the bread, it's a free gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the healing and health. Sound health. Sound health. 
sound health, restoration, health restoration, health restoration from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, in the intestines, in the internal system, external system, complete health delivery, complete total health delivery, full health delivery, full health delivery, full health delivery, full health delivery from heaven. Divine, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Servant of God, I want you to take out your anointing oil. I want you to take up your anointing oil. There are three, four weapons the Lord said to me, we shall engage tonight. The first one is lamentation crying out, which we have done. The second one is engaging the anointing oil. The third one is the communion. Now, I want you to understand this thing. God is the one that called for this meeting. I didn't choose it. I didn't choose it. God called it at the right time because he, you are about to take off to a new level, a new height of impact of glory, of riches, of wisdom, of ministry, of, 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 of rising on the, on, in the high places of the earth, soaring high in the high places of the earth. And what trapped you down could not have let you rise. And God unveiled it in order to destroy it. God refused to redeem. He refused to re redeem. He revealed it to redeem you from the cage so that you can mount up with wings that the eagle and soar high into high places of the mission and the mandate of your life. I see in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. He says, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. That's how my translation puts it. He said, in that day, the Lord will end the bondage of his people. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulder. Hey, what a day. What a day, whatever weight you have been carrying, whatever weight the devil put on you, whatever weight circumstances put on you, God wants to take it off your shoulder. He said, in that day, today is that day. Please, I want you to take it as today, not tomorrow. It is today. The Lord will end the bondage of his people. Your bondage is ending today. Your bondage is ending today. The bondage over your family is ending today. The bondage placed over your, your calling, the, your mandate, your mandate, your assignment, your calling, your business, your career, your marriage, your children. The bondage placed over it is breaking, is ending today. He says, he will break the voice, the yoke rather, of slavery and lift up their burdens. They are lifted off their shoulder. I want you to take up that anointing. Oh, you yeah. won't permit me to go deep into that. You know the, the issue, I'm sure everybody here, you know about the anointing oil. The Bible says, anyone sick, let him call on the elders. Let them pray, anointing him with oil. For the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Anointing brings healing. Anointing breaks yoke. Anointing breaks yoke. Anointing brings healing. Anointing opens door. Anointing opens door. He says, he rebukes kings and princes, saying, touch not my anointed. You can touch anybody, but in this second half of the year, this second half of 2023, which is our year of divine settlement, divine perfection, divine establishment, divine strengthening. In this particular year, this second half of the year, which is the season of stepping into your divine settlement, no man, no woman, no devil, no demon is permitted to touch you. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed. Please take, if you don't have anointing oil, go and take, uh, what do you call it? Women, what do you call it? Cooking oil. Go and take cooking oil. 
just find something put it on your on your put get it ready i'm going to pray over it i am not the one anointing you i see christ jesus walk into your room and anoint you i see christ jesus walk into your room and anoint you remember what happened in the life of samuel and uh, 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 what's his name saul in first samuel chapter 9 you read the ending part of chapter 9 and then chapter 10 from verse 1 down to about 10 or 12. The Bible said that the missing ass of the uh, asses we are missing in the house of Esse, Esse uh, what is it, Jesse rather, the father of, 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 of Saul. And they sent out Saul to go search for it everywhere. And Saul was going from bush to bush, from bush to bush, until the servant advised, let's go and meet a prophet, Samuel. He will tell us, he will show us where the asses were. And they went, and before they got there, God had told Samuel, by this time tomorrow, I'm sending a man to you whom you should anoint, whom you should anoint as king over my selected, chosen, beloved people. And lo and behold, at the right time, this guy landed. And Samuel called him inside, took a cruise of oil and anointed him and made a pronouncement. He said, are thou not he unto whom the whole nation of Israel is looking? They are looking unto you. They are looking unto you. Your family is looking unto you. The city is looking unto you. The, the industry you are working in is looking unto you. You are not most educated. You are not most, not most qualified, but they are looking unto you by divine calling, divine appointment. That is the reality. Not the most qualified are always on the top. God has chosen you. I speak as a messenger from heaven. God has chosen you to be on top, to be on top, on top, on top, not beneath, not beneath. Irrespective of your educational background, you are being anointed today to rise. However, Saul became another man. That is what will happen to you today. After Samuel anointed him, the Bible said another heart came upon him. Another heart, another heart came upon him. And behold, Saul became another man and began to prophesy. And the people began to ask, what has come upon the son of Kish? Where is he coming from? Where is he coming from? I see God repeat the same thing in your life today. As this anointing comes upon you, a Samuel is coming your way. I said the other day that the Global Harvest Prayer Network, one of our commission is the Samuel Commission to be a vehicle to anoint people, to raise people, to raise people, to empower people and unleash them into their mission. That's one of our assignments. So let hold, lift up your anointing on you. You anointed or you lift it up to the Lord. Lift it up to the Lord. I want you to lift it up to him who is going to anoint you. You are going to use your own hand. Jesus will borrow your hand to anoint you. Jesus will borrow your hand to anoint you. All right? It wasn't Samuel that made Saul to become another man. God was walking through Samuel. God will also walk through you now, through your hand now. The way God walked through the hand of Samuel, God walked through your hand to anoint you so that you will turn into your that woman you ought to be, that the enemy has resisted over the year, that man you ought to be, your business will break forth and break forth on every side in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I lift up this anointing to you right now. And Lord, I speak into this oil, which your daughters and your sons are holding in their hands. My God, I speak into this oil. You said, I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. And because of the anointing, his enemy shall not outwit him. The forces of hell shall not stop him. They cannot conquer him. The Goliath of life cannot conquer him. The lions of life cannot eat him up. The bears of life cannot eat him up. Because of the anointing on his head, he shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, upon dragons and upon lions, and no evil shall befall him by reason of the anointing. By reason of the anointing, Father, you say that we, you, you will restrain kings and princes from doing us harm. You will rebuke them. You will restrain them, saying, don't you know he's anointed? Don't you know she's anointed? She is set apart. He is set apart for me. Don't you know this business is anointed? This ministry is anointed. He's set apart for me. Do not touch. Do not touch whom the Lord has anointed. 
Father, let it be that as this oil will touch your servants, let there be such impartation of yourself, impartation, endowment with power, endowment with fire, endowment with glory, endowment with wisdom, endowment with honor, endowment with blessing, endowment with riches, endowment with wealth, endowment with wisdom, creativity, intelligence, high level intelligence, high level intelligence, high level intelligence, creativity, creativity, ability to produce in, in with, with an incredible velocity, 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 new velocity, new speed of progress comes upon each man, each woman, new speed of progress, accelerated progress, accelerated healing, accelerated healing, accelerated progress, accelerated breakthrough, accelerated victory in the name of Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Take that anointing, put it on your head. In the name that is above all names. Take it and put it on your head. Father, the head represents the center of the life of your son and your daughter. By reason of this anointing, no evil shall befall them. It's anointing for life. You will return everything that your head is giving to you for. Your head carries your brain. I activate your brain fully. You are, the anointing comes upon your brain. It comes upon your eyes, your vision. It comes upon your hearing ability. It comes about upon your vocal ability, your oratory ability. Yes, it comes upon your tongue, upon your eyes, upon your ears, upon your brain. It comes upon your beauty, your beauty. Your beauty shall shine forth in a way that people can't explain it. God of heaven, by reason of this anointing, Lord, I decree that these men are women shall not lose their life. Death is banished. Death is banished in the name of Jesus. By reason of this anointing, you shall not die. You shall live. I say you shall live to fulfill the agenda, the plan and purpose of God in this second half of this year. In the name of Jesus, your head shall not be buried in shame. Your head shall not bow down. You shall lift up your face. You shall raise your head. Your head shall not be swallowed up. You will raise up your head. You will lift up your head above shame and reproach and every device of the enemy. You will raise your head above the waters of this life in the mighty name of Jesus. By reason of this anointing, you shall stand out. You shall stand out. You shall be visible. I command the anointing of visibility, 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 visibility comes upon you. Anointing of visibility comes upon your ministry. Anointing of visibility over your business, anointing of visibility over your, the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. Put up the anointing upon your two hands. Rub it on your hands. Rub it on your hands and stretch out those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that these hands are blessed. This second half of this year, my God, these hands shall do exploit. These hands are anointed for creativity. These hands are anointed for productivity. These hands are anointed for exploit, exploit, exploit. We shall lay hands. These hands shall be laid on the sick and the sick shall recover in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever these hands shall touch shall prosper. What Whatever this hand shall touch, shall prosper. You will bless the work of this hands. You will bless the work of this hand. You will bless from this day. I proclaim the blessing of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow. That anointing of blessing of the Lord is on your hands. In the name of Jesus, touch on your feet, servant of God. Please bear with me. Just touch your legs. Touch your legs. The Bible says, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread, it shall be given unto you. It shall be given unto you. Stay with your feet. You shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, upon adders, upon dragons, upon lions, upon all the forces of wickedness, and nothing shall by enemies harm you. And please don't remove, remove if you are wearing a shoe, remove it and anoint those legs. Drop that oil on your leg. You don't know where you go. This is just the seventh day of the second half of this year. You don't know where you go. I want you to put your hand upon that leg as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the hand, the legs of your servants, your sons and daughters from this day shall go to the right place. You will go to the right place. You will find yourself at the right place at the right time. In this second half of 
2023, you shall not go to the wrong place. You shall not go to where danger is waiting for you. You shall go to where the blessing of God is waiting for you. You shall not go to the wrong place. You will be, you will find yourself at the right place. And when you get there, everything will work in your favor. Everything will turn in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, no matter the situation there, when you walk in there, when Joseph entered the house of Potiphar, everything began to flourish. When when Isaac, yes, Masudi entry, Jacob, got into the house of Laban, everything began to flourish. Wherever you go, wherever the soul of this, your fish shall trade, goodness and mercy shall follow you. Blessing shall be your portion. Victory shall be your story. Glory shall be your story. No evil shall befall you. Anywhere you go, in your going out, in your coming in, the glory of God shall follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. With this hand, with these legs, you will march upon serpents. You will march upon scorpions. You will march upon serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm, harm you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. I want to give you one or two minutes to just thank God. Please, please, please just thank God for the anointing that has come upon you. I want you to unmute and begin to thank God for the anointing that has come upon you, upon your leg, upon your head, upon the work of upon your head. Father, we thank you. Glory be to God. Servant of God. Anointing is for impact. Hey! Anointing is for exploit. <laughs> anointing is for warfare. Anointing is to make you an agent of deliverance, an agent of freedom. Anointing is to make you to stand out in the society. Anointing is to make you an ambassador of God, a representative of God. That's what anointing is on. There is an anointing upon you. Anointing, when Samuel anointed David secretly, he didn't know that anointing will bring him out to the public and make him a killer of Goliath. By reason of this anointing, rise up and shine, rise up and crush every satanic force that is crushing people of your society and the environment and your family. You are raised today as an agent of revival. You are raised today as a weapon in the hand of God to humiliate the enemy and to silence the enemy that is tormenting people out there. In the name of Jesus Christ, go and have dominion. Go and have dominion. Go and subdue, to conquer, to prevail, and to manifest the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Number two, three, rather weapon. The Lord said to me, I'm giving my people power to make wealth. Power to make wealth. Power to increase in wealth. Because my city, through the prosperity of my people, shall spread abroad. I'm releasing power to make wealth. I said, Lord, how? He took me to the book of, I, I mean, what is it now? The book of uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 14, for verse 19, rather, and verse 20. He says, and may, and, and my God, shall supply all your needs 
according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm. Mm. Read, look at the first verse, the verse before that, the verse before that. I want you to take this matter serious. God has seen your situation. He says, indeed, I have all and abound. That's Paul the Apostle writing, my elder brother. He said, indeed, indeed. Let me see the New Living Translation. He said, at the moment, I have all I need and more. I have all I need and more. Wow. Everything I need, I have it. And I have more extra. I am gracious, generously supplied with the gift you sent me with a prophetus. They are a sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing, pleasing to God. It says, having received from a, 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 a Paphroditus, the things sent from you, the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. As a result of it, look at the next verse. He says, and my God, as a result of what you have supplied, as a result of the sacrifices, very serious sacrifice that are acceptable. That means there are sacrifices that are not acceptable. There are sacrifices that are not pleasing to God. Sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God, which you have brought, that has made me to have everything I need and more and more for the ministry, for the assignment. He said, as a result of it, and my God shall therefore supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And the Lord was saying to me, do you understand what it means that God of heaven, the owner of the universe, the owner of all the oil in the, in the ground, the owner of all the diamonds and all the gold and all the cattle upon a thousand hill, the one that owns the whole of creation, the one that owns the whole universe, will supply your needs according to his economy, according to the level of his riches, according to the level of his glory, not according to the economy of your nation, according to the wealth dimension of his vast great riches. Mm. So my eyes opened up here that God can elevate a man, God can elevate a woman, where he is no longer depending on the economy of the nation, on the economy of the place where he's working, on the salary, but he's now floating in the realm of the heavenly riches. How did he start? You supplied all that I needed. You supplied all that I needed, and more abundantly. Therefore, this is your portion. I'm going to give you opportunity to change your financial story in the second half of the year. Not me, but God is giving you an opportunity to sow a sacrificial seed that is acceptable to God and well-pleasing to him. Lord, what would you have me to use to seal these five days of fast? Well, it's actually a seven days fast we were into, but we made it open to the public for five days because we didn't meet Saturday and Sunday. Though some of us have been on it before now. Lord, what would you have me sacrificially used to say thank you? The Lord said to me, four weapons of freedom in this season. One is the lamentation, which we've done. Number two is the anointing. Number three is the offering. Number four is the communion. I want them to project the, uh, the banking details of the Global Harvest Prayer Network. Now, when you are giving it, I want you to put as a reference, as a reference, that's what the Lord laid in my heart because he told me to proclaim priestly blessing, priestly blessing upon you, priestly blessing over your ministry, priestly blessing over your business, priestly blessing over the work of your hand, over your family, over your marriage, over your expectation, over your job, your career, priestly blessing on it. Remember what happened to, 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 to Hannah. The, the, the backsliding priest 
spoke and it happened. By the grace of God, I've not backslidden and there's no ground for backsliding till I find my, mess, my lover, Christ Jesus, whom, to whom I've given my all and will still give my all. I want to pray for you as commanded. Write on a reference, priestly acceleration offering. Priestly offering for my life, for my acceleration. Anyhow you coin it. I want you to give it as a seed, is a seed to activate, to establish, to say amen to all the prayer we have prayed since we began. Is a priestly offering, is a covenant offering, is a thanksgiving offering, is a celebration offering, destiny and unlocking offering. Destiny unlocking offering. My destiny has been locked for a long time. It is being unlocked. It is being unleashed. It is being released. My business, my marriage, my family, my children, my health, my career, my promotion that is overdue is hereby unlocked. And Lord, I want to use this to say thank you. Father, I stand here, Lord, as you commanded to proclaim upon every man, upon every woman, under my voice, in the name that is above our name. Lord, I decree that your grace will locate the work of their hands. Let your grace locate the work of their hands and give them an unexplainable lifting, unexplainable freedom, unexplainable breakthrough, unexplainable acceleration in their finances, in their career, in their journey job, in their profession, in their business, in the work of their hands, whatever wealth creation venture you have given them ability for, Lord, I pray for supernatural acceleration in the name of Jesus, according to the riches of your glory, according to the wealth of your kingdom, according to the wealth of your kingdom, in the name of Jesus, receive wings to fly financially, receive wings to fly financially, receive power to make wealth, receive Receive power to increase. Receive power to dwell in abundance. To dwell in abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. It is done. Glory be to God. Please, servant of God, ensure that you do something very sacrificially acceptable to God and well pleasing to him. God bless you. Please give me the book of um, two scriptures the Lord laid in my heart. One is Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. Another is the book of John chapter 11. And that John 11, I'm going to read the long portion there. He says in Zechariah, as for you also, please, I want you to take up your communion element. Get your communion element ready. As for you, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free, 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 free from the waterless pit. There is a covenant of blood we want to engage with or engage into this evening to ensure that every portion of your inheritance that has been locked in the waterless pit, the covenant of the blood of Jesus, we locate it and unleash it. We locate it and release it. We want to use every means possible to make sure there is complete, a whole complete, complete, complete holistic release of your inheritance that has been stolen and challenged of your hands. The covenant of the blood of Jesus. The covenant of the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, by the shedding of his blood, our sins we are sorted. By the shedding of his blood, every covenant that was speaking against us, everything written against us, everything documented against us, every handwriting of ordinances, legislation, written and documented against us, the blood of Jesus deleted them, deleted them, deleted them. Your destiny could not have been held if there was no legal ground. But the blood of Jesus 
has silenced the ground, the legal ground, the authorization of the demons to arrest or to capture or to influence or control your portion in the land of the living. So the blood of Jesus comes to redeem you and to redeem you and to re release you and to retrieve back your portion that has been stolen, the blood of Jesus. And then John chapter 11 from verse 20, am I right? I hope that's the scripture, John chapter uh, 11 from verse 20. Let me be sure, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Good, thank you. That's it, from verse 20. He says, John 11 from verse 20, now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Martha, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, even now, even now, whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said unto her, your brother will rise again. Your brother will rise again. Your future will rise again. Your destiny will rise again. Your marriage will rise again. Your business will rise again. Your gift will rise again. Your gift, your gift, your talent will rise again. Your destiny, your future will rise again. Your son will rise again. Your daughter will rise again. Your wife will rise again. Your husband will rise again. Your health will rise again. Your dream will rise again. That was what the Lord called my attention to. He said, your brother will rise again. Yes. The brother they are talking about is in the grave, decayed for four days or so. Martha said unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. It will take time. It will take time. I know, but it will take time. Servant of God, what God wants to do is, a, how do I put it? God is bringing you in a season of accelerated velocity. That what you could have done in 10 years, God can do in one month, in one month, in one week, in one year, what you could have done in 10 years. What could have done, what you could have done in a hundred years, God can do in one year. I said, what you could have done in a hundred years, God is able to do in one single year, in one single month. Because with him, there is no impossibility. Verse number 25, what did he say? Then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, though he may die, he shall live. He shall live. He shall live. He shall live. Though he's dead already, he will live again. He will live again. And who so, whoever believes and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Your brother is dead. If you believe, he will rise. If you will believe, he will rise. The brother is dead already. It's you that have to believe. So we are going to pray today. Verse 17. She said unto him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into the world. We want to pray. This time around, I want you to take this communion believing, believing that by the blood of this covenant, the blood of Jesus that was shed on, your, on the cross for you, where he paid every price and finished every price that needed to be paid for your freedom. He completed it. Tetelestai. He completed it. He paid it all. Every price required for your release, the release of your blessing, the release of your health, everything he paid it in the blood, he paid it. And we want to engage it to say, though your brother was dead, believe he will rise. They say, sir, we know he will rise on the day of resurrection. He said, no, it's now, it's now, it's now. Servant of God, take up your communion element and pray over it. And what is the prayer? Lord, as I partake of this communion, as I partake of this communion, as I eat this communion, please make sure you give this communion to your family people. Even if they are, no matter where they are, pray for them to partake, pray for them. If they are not in this meeting, 
send this, uh, this documentary. We send this to them. You pray for them. Pray for them and minister to them. Let them partake of this communion. What is this communion meant to make? Do It's meant to unlock everything that the enemy had buried, had killed. Lazarus was not just dead, he was buried. He said, your brother will rise again. Your destiny will rise again. Your inheritance will rise again. Your portion will rise again. Your promotion will rise again. Your gift will rise again. Your calling will wake up again. Igalaziete. Now begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray over your own element. Begin to pray over your own element. Begin to provide whatever you want it to do. Your healing, your deliverance, your breakthrough. Please unmute and begin to pray. Begin to provide in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I can't partake of it today. Lord, Lord of heaven, that seems to be the most correct. That seems to be the most correct. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I have been living most of my life. I have been living most of my life. I have been living most of my life. The power in the blood of Jesus that speaks the same and the blood of Abel. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead and partake of it. Go ahead. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. As you take it, begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. Father, thank you. 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 Lord, I 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 thank you. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty and good pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I want to ask Mama Hart to please thank God for this meeting. 
Mama Heart, are you still there? Please, I want you to admit and proclaim the blessing of God to bring a ceiling upon this. And please, as you make that prayer, I see somebody that wrote a prayer point. He said, my ankle is fractured. My ankle is fractured. I want us to decree instantly, instantly, let there be let there be a supernatural fixing of that ankle. Supernatural fixing of that ankle. I just saw it now. Mama, let's go ahead and make that proclamation. Lord, we thank you. Thank and you. Lord. Return all the glory to you thank for yes, Lord, all Lord. the things that you have done this night. Jesus. We celebrate you mm. even for the healing of this ankle. Thank you, Jesus. Instant Amen. We honor you Thank for putting you, a seal mm. over the blessings that mm. you have released this night. Mm. We we'll receive it with thanksgiving Amen. and we command it manifestation, Amen. instant manifestation. Amen. There shall be no delay. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, we thank you because it's already manifesting. Amen. We we'll receive it with thanksgiving. Our eyes have seen it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hand has we touch it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing shall be removed from it. Amen. The enemy will not add anything. It Amen. will not be hijacked. Amen. It will not be truncated. Amen. It will not be perverted. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. People of God, we'll see you on Monday by our usual time by 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 5 30 south african time we begin continue to pray for the global harvest summit coming up in cape town it's coming up in cape town the next is going to be in durban the next will be in 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 pretoria and the last one will be in eastern cape it's going to be meeting which heaven has has long to see and we celebrate amen amen the lord will lay your heart to do about this conference please do so please do so and god will bless you and enrich you in that amen. name of jesus please if you are here for the first time if you are here if you are new somebody invited you we welcome you in the name of jesus please go to the chat box and write your name and your phone number Write your name and your phone number on the chat box. God bless you as you do so. And for those who invited people, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord cause you to see the benefit of serving him excitedly. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to thank all of you who really labored in the course of this meeting with the fasting and inviting and running the media. God bless you and bless you and bless you. Please, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go to our YouTube channel is called um, Global Harvest Prayer Network. Global Harvest Prayer Network. Go and subscribe. Subscribe. And our Facebook is Easy Light. Go there and, you know, so that you will be connecting to what God is doing. God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and make you the testimony of this very uh, summit. The testimony of this fasting. You are the testimony of this fasting. Amen. And abound on every side that God has made you this testimony one of this summit. And this year, you will be the testimony of this year. I say you will be the testimony of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. Goodness. 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 Goodness.